and have poor health outcomes as adults. In 1974, Congress enacted the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, or CAPTA, to create a single federal focus for preventing and responding to child abuse and neglect. That landmark legislation helped establish the minimum standards for specific reporting and response practices for states to include in their child protection laws. CAPTA remains the only federal legislation exclusively dedicated to preventing, assessing, identifying, and treating child abuse and neglect. In order to receive grant funds under the Act, states are required to have procedures in place for receiving and responding to allegations of abuse or neglect and for ensuring children's safety. Since its enactment, CAPTA has been reauthorized numerous times, more recently by Keeping Children and Families Safe Act of 2003. Currently, it authorizes three critical programs. This includes formula grants to states to help improve their child protective services, competitive grants to prevent and treat child abuse and neglect, and formula grants to states for support of community-based prevention services. In addition, CAPTA authorizes formula state grants, commonly referred to as the Children's Justice Act grants, to improve the prosecution and handling of child abuse and neglect cases. This CAPTA reauthorization works to support and expand the use of evidence-based best practices in the field of child welfare and make changes to encourage states to adopt a differential, pro a differential response model in working with at-risk families and in preventing and intervening in cases of child abuse or neglect. Differential response allows child welfare agencies to intervene, fa intervene with families in more supportive ways often by focusing or, reassess or assessing family strength and needs and providing services. Research shows this approach can be less disruptive and more supportive to families, leading to safer and stronger homes for children. The bill improves the Community-Based Child Abuse Prevention, CBCAP, program to encourage a greater child and family voice in planning efforts. Additionally, the bill takes steps to improve research on how to prevent child abuse and neglect in tribal families enhance access to grants for tribes and tribal organizations, and expands the involvement of tribal, tribal leaders in advisory roles. Thanks to subcommittee chair Mrs. McCarthy's leadership on the issue, the bill before us also ensures fewer children will fall through the cracks by improving services when there are cross-jurisdictional complications. Also included in this legislation is a reauthorization of the Family Violence Prevention and Services Act. FVPSA is the primary federal funding stream for domestic violence shelters and direct services to victims of domestic violence and their children. Over 2,000 shelters and programs receive grant funding under this statute. With this reauthorization, FVPSA will better meet the needs of children exposed to domestic violence, including those exposed to teen dating violence or abuse. The bill also expands capacity for the National Domestic Violence Hotline which provides a toll-free 24-hour hotline to offer assistance and referrals to victims of domestic violence and families. This bill reflects some of the language from H.R. 4116, reauthorizing FAFSA, of which I'm a regional co-sponsor. It will strengthen the coalition against domestic and sexual violence in the Northern Mariana Islands and similar groups working to help victims in other U.S. insular areas. These non-government organizations provide shelter, counseling, and intervention and prevention, prevention services. But for island jurisdictions like the Northern Mariana Islands, providing this help can be difficult. We have three main inhabited islands, and services available on one are not readily available on the others. Passage of S3817 will allow for establishment of shelters on each of the three islands to provide temporary protection for victims. Currently, the single shelter on the island of Saipan is inaccessible to victims who are living on the islands of Tinian and Rota. I want to thank Representative Gwen Moore and her staff for close, working closely with me to ensure, help ensure that insular areas are able to provide protection to victims of domestic violence, as we do in the rest of the United States. Education and Labor Committee George Miller, Chairman George Miller has also been a strong supporter. I also want to thank the sponsor of the Senate, Senate bill, Senator Chris Dodd, for his leadership in bringing this important legislation to the House, as well as Senators Daniel Inouye, Daniel Akaka, Je and Jeff Bingham, and Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pension Committee Chairman Tom Harkin for working to ensure that help is available 
for victims of sexual and domestic assault anywhere in America. Finally, I want to add, thank Mr. Klein for working with us to complete this important reauthorization. Mr. Speaker, I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting Senate Bill 3817 to reauthorize the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act and Family Violence Prevention and Services Act. And I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. For what purpose does the gentleman from Kentucky rise? Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. And I rise in support of Senate Bill 3817, the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, reauthorization of 2010. This bill reauthorizes the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, the Family Violence Services and Prevention Act, and the Adoption Opportunities Act. This is a narrowly tailored and responsible reauthorization for these important laws to update and improve these programs that help children from, and their families from violence. This bill maintains current funding authorization levels and does not add any, add any new programs. It does, however, make some good policy changes that will help protect children in need, help abuse and neglected children with special needs find new families faster, and help local governments coordinate efforts to protect these children better. One of the policy changes made in this bill is to support training and collaboration between child protective services and domestic violence service providers. This collaboration will help prevent child abuse and neglect through initiatives such as differential response, which allows professionals to assess children and families' needs without requiring a determination that a maltreatment has occurred. This legislation also includes training for professionals on best practices to meet the needs of children with disabilities and supports better links between child protective services and disability groups to improve diagnosis and assistance to these children. The bill provides technical assistance and training on domestic violence to state and local agencies and puts an increased emphasis on prevention of family violence, including dating violence. This bill is a responsible reauthorization that modernizes these important programs and does so without increasing authorization levels or adding new federal programs. This reauthorization will help states and local governments protect our most vulnerable citizens through better coordination and training. This is a good, responsible reauthorization and I urge my colleagues to support it. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves the balance of his time. The gentleman uh, from Northern Mariana Islands. Uh, Mr. Recognized. Speaker, I'm, I'm pleased to recognize at this time the gentlewoman from New York, the chair of the Subcommittee on Healthy Families, Ms. McCarthy, for two minutes. The gentlewoman is so recognized. I want to thank uh, my uh, <coughs> colleague, Mrs. Byrne and Mr. Kirtree, for uh, supporting this. I rise in support of S3817, the Child Abuse Prevention Treatment Reauthorization of 2010. First, I want to thank uh, Chairman Miller and Ranking Member Klein for their hard work and certainly uh, the staff that have worked uh, very hard on this issue also. I also want to thank uh, Senator Harkin and Dodd for their leadership on getting this bill through the Senate. Abuse, and neglect, and uh, fatalities are uh, significant concerns for all of us in this nation, and I am proud that we are addressing this today. As a nurse for over 30 years, I have seen firsthand the risks, the illnesses that can result due to abuse and neglect. A concern which surfaced during the hearings on my subcommittee when we held uh, this on this topic, that child abuse does not uh, respect state lines. A result of this hearing, I introduced a bill called Protecting Children Across State Lines Act. I am proud to have provisions of my bill included in the capital legislation. My provisions do two things. One, it requires data to be collected showing which reports are screened out of the basis of multiple state authorities being involved. Two, it clarifies the state task force recommendations for comprehensive protection for our children should address issues in which multiple state authorities are involved. We know that children who experience or witness abuse or neglect have their sense of security, trust, and sa uh, safety shaken to the core. Studies show that young children are more likely to be reported as victims. The uh, maltreatment rates for infants is 21% compared to 13% for children of ages 1 to 3. Neglect is one of the most troublesome problems that we face in this area. In fact, more than 60% of children who come to the attention of child welfare authorities are victims of neglect. Sometimes these cases of neglect happen due to the simple fact that parents do need assistance. These parents are not monsters. They just need to be connected with available services or need help with basic preparing skills. We know from studies that the impact of chronic long-term neglect is dis uh, disadvantaging to the developing of children. Yeah. 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 
30 seconds. The gentleman yields 30 additional seconds. Gentleman Victims Mignola. of abuse and neglect are more likely to have delays with language or uh, cognitive uh, skills. They are more likely to be arrested for truancy. We also know they have poor health outcomes as adults. Or the 35 years of Congress enacted CAPTA to create a single federal focus on child abuse and neglect. The rates of physical abuse have decreased in recent years, but the rates of neglect have remained constant. Difficult financial times can lead to violence, and victims with fewer personal resources become more vulnerable. Mr. Speaker, I urge all of my colleagues to vote for this. This is for the children of this nation. I urge them to support S3817. I yield back. Thank you. The gentlewoman's uh, time has expired. The gentleman from Kentucky will be recognized. Mr. Speaker, I have no speakers at this time. I continue to reserve. The gentleman reserves his time. The gentleman from Northern Mariana. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And at this time, I'm pleased to recognize the gentlewoman from Wisconsin, Ms. Moore, for three minutes. All right. The gentlewoman from uh, Wisconsin is recognized for three minutes. Uh, thank you, Representative uh, Sablon, for yielding, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am just so overjoyed to be rising today to celebrate the imminent passage of the Family Violence Prevention and Services Act, or FIPSA, as well as the passage of uh, CAPTA, the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act. By taking swift action to pass these bills before the end of the year, we are taking a stand to protect victims of domestic violence as well as children who are victims of abuse. We are also taking landmark steps to help break the cycle of abuse for generations to come. I want to pause here to personally thank Chairman George Miller of the Education and Labor Committee and Senator Chris Dodd. Uh, I have worked so hard to bring attention to these bills and I've been fortunate uh, enough to have strong allies in these two chairmen, both of whom are extremely committed to these causes. Uh, I have had the honor of being the lead sponsor and champion for FIPSA in the House, but I certainly wouldn't be celebrating here today without the good work of Chairman Miller and Senator Dodd. I also uh, need to acknowledge and and thank the many advocates and victim service providers who helped shape this legislation and rallied support at key moments, particularly the advocates from the National Network to End Domestic Violence and the Wisconsin Coalition Against Domestic Violence. Now, in spite of the fact that we've made great progress towards acknowledging that domestic violence is a crime and, and, and a crisis and a threat to public health, We've got such a long way to go. One in four women in this country experiences domestic violence in her life. Every day in this country, an average of three women are killed by a current or former intimate partner. In my state alone, deaths from domestic violence are a highest, the highest in a decade. And approximately 15 and a half million children are exposed to domestic violence each year. Uh, in fact, one half to two thirds of domestic violence shelter residents are children. The women and men who are victimized live in each and every one of our congressional districts. They come from all walks of life, regardless of socioeconomic status, ethnicity, religion, partisan affiliation. They're members of our families, their friends, their neighbors, their coworkers, and some in this room have been victims and survivors of this violence. Since the economic downturn started, we've been hearing more and more horror stories from the shelters and service providers. The economy has been a very bad situation, has made the, a bad situation worse for an increasing numbers of victims, many of whom have few resources to flee their abusers. Mr. Speaker, I yield another 30 seconds to the gentlewoman. The gentlewoman is recognized for an additional 30 seconds. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, we've said that FIPSA keeps the lights on for these programs, and it's always done a great job. And the beautiful thing about this program is that it, the reauthorization authorizes more activities to help us uh, better treat 
uh, children uh, in particular who are traumatized by this violence. And with that, I would yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman yields back. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to inquire if there are further speakers on the other side. Uh, Mr. Speaker, yes, we do. I'll continue to reserve. The gentleman from Kentucky continues to reserve. The gentleman from the Northern Marianas Island is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this time, I'm pleased to recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Miller, for as much time as he may consume. The gentleman from California is recognized for as much time as he may consume. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I rise in strong support of S3817, the Child Abuse and Prevention Treatment Reauthorization Act of, of 2010. The Child Abuse and Prevention Tre Reauthorization Act is the only federal legislation that exclusively dedicated to the preventing, assessing, identifying, and treating the effects of child abuse and neglect. This reauthorization includes a number of important reforms for more use of the best practices in the child welfare system. First, the bill focuses on the vulnerable populations, unaccompanied homeless children, as well as children with disabilities. Second, the bill improves and strengthens the data collection and analysis to improve state coordination of overall services to, to help prevent child abuse. And third, we improve the training of people who work in the, with abused and neglected children to ensure the best practices are followed and families remain whole where possible and children are removed from dangerous situations where needed. The Democratic Congress has taken swift action in the past to address issues of safety of our children in school, in child care, and in treatment facilities. It is clear we need to do more to help our children in their homes. This bill will address, also will address domestic violence by reauthorizing the Family Violence Prevention and Services Act. And I want to thank the gentlewoman who just preceded me in the well here, Congresswoman Gwen Moore, for her leadership and efforts to highlight this important issue. It's a sad reality that during economic downturns, domestic violence occurrences happen more frequently. We know that nearly one in four women have abused by a partner.